What's going on guys, Neil Guides here. In today's video, I'll be talking about um, how to defend against crosses, in particular El Tornado crosses. Um, problem with El Tornado crosses, you probably know, is any type of cross, not just El Tornadoes, let's say a lobbed cross, so let's say if the ball's not touching the ground, so let's say it's in the air, like at a half volley, or any of those types of forms of crosses, it's extremely hard to defend against, almost indefensible, but you can help prevent it. So I'll, I'll just talk about the best ways I think you can help defend it and the best players and formations to use to defend it. Um, as usual, timestamps on the description below. If you want to skip to a certain part of the video, please feel free to do so because it will be quite a long video. I just want to make sure I just cover everything just to avoid the quest just to avoid people asking questions on Twitter after to me and I have to keep answering the same question again. Uh, but if you do have any questions, you know, on, on Twitter, please let me know. You know, if you want, want me to verify anything, just send me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So just going into going into it straight away, heading and crossing is still OP. Um, unfortunately, the way the current game is, it's still more efficient to go down the line and do an alternate across, and that's the, probably the best way to score, especially against drop back and park the bus. And although it shouldn't be the most efficient way, it still is because now one on one finishing is still so inconsistent. So especially if you break down an opposition's defense, there's a big chance the ball's not going in. This is going to mainly affect people in Division One. Um, I think it'll be the meta eventually in Division 2 and 3 um, in upcoming weeks, but it's, I've mainly seen this in Division 1 and mainly with the higher Gold 1 Elite and Elite tier players. Um, a few of my friends have been playing who are, in the, who are like in the Elite. They've been all been doing the alternator crosses just because the wins at the end of the day is the most important thing. So how does it work? Well, essentially the, the best way to defend against it is to have four defenders and essentially tall set up left backs and right backs that's the way you want to id the, the the key is you don't want to let the ball go into the box that's the first thing but most cases against an l tornado cross if you give the guy too much space he can just cut in and do a low driven across the pitch i mean across the across the goal so it's a bit difficult um for formations um defending wise um it gets a bit difficult when it comes to defending I just say try to maintain you have four four backs. Um, I wouldn't recommend going to th uh, three defenders. Five defenders are good. Um, it's just it's a bit too defensive for my liking. Uh, but try not to go to uh, three defenders. Um, I found that against three defenders, back post crosses are basically un unbeatable because you're playing against a four triple two or a four four two. You're going to be outnumbered because what's going to happen is you're going to have four strikers, which includes the wingers, against the three centre backs. So you're going to have a mismatch in terms of defending crosses. So I wouldn't suggest that. I would say the best thing to do is to use four defenders. I think that's kind of the best way. Particularly, can, um, you want to concentrate on making sure that your left back and right back are tall players um, because that's where the crosses are going to come in and back post crosses. Uh, you're going to see a lot of formations. Um, I'm still deciding what the meta formation is. I'll have a video on that coming soon. But from what I'm seeing in the higher divisions, you'll have players like like here in the left hacking mid, like Crespo's, Ibrahim, which what I said in my last video. The reason why is because the cams, they go back post. Um, so when you get, for example, a chance with Goretzka, let's say Goretzka goes down the wing, and let's say, let's say this in this case, hypothetically speaking, he crossed the ball in. You want a tall player like Ronaldo over here so you can get the goal an easy goal with a back post header. That's kind of the, the way I'm seeing formations going now right now. I'm seeing less 4 one 2 one twos. I'm seeing a lot of 4 2 three ones. I think the wing players is kind of what's important for back post headers. Uh or the, the you could say the 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 cams you could say I suppose. I see four two four but not too much because you're quite against four two four people don't use it too much because in midfield you most of the time you're outnumbered, especially if you're playing drop back. I do see four two three one again the same principle here, you know, you have tall players like Crespo and Ibrahimovic or Ronaldo and Mbappe. You can just run into the box and go for the back post headers is what I see quite a lot in the high divisions. I guess my friends are in the elite anyway. Um so that's kind of the I suppose you could say the main formations I've seen right now. The meta eventually will be alternated crosses and crossing in general. I think people are still getting used to the patch. But eventually, I would say in two or three weeks' time, the game's just going to get progressively worse and you're going to see a lot more crosses. People don't realize that at the moment. 
but that's what it would be. Uh, so what? So the players people are using now. Peep now. Obviously, if you have a lot of money, the players you want obviously are Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, e he's even his normal version is more than adequate enough to get a back post header. He's basically one of the most perfect players um, in the game, especially to get a header. I mean, even, even if you take his normal card, for, forget his team of the year, his normal card alone has 95 jumping, and he's six foot two. So even so, just completely forgetting about his team of the year, his normal card is pretty much OP. You're going to see, you're going to struggle against players that are tall. Um, I've been seeing a lot of players using Mbappe. Now, this Mbappe team of the year card is unbelievable in the air. I don't know why he's so good in the air. I see a lot of players use marksmen on him. Um, when you use marksmen, you know you get you get around. Uh, it's not you get plus ten with marksmen on the jumping. So you see players using finisher or marksmen just to get the the jumping and the strength up, just to make sure you guarantee and you get that header. So that's the kind of players you use. Um, of course, um, for those who didn't do Ibrahimovic SPC, you're going to be in. I, w I would say deep regret. I regret it, even though I don't cross the ball. I still, I think it's still important to have a target man. Um, those who didn't do this SPC, you know, you're probably going to regret it. This guy's an animal, and he, uh, you know, has 80 jumping. You put a marksman on him, he gets 90 jumping. You know, he's six foot five. You know, when he leaps, six foot five. Uh, you know, even 90 jumping with marksman on this card, there's no stopping him. He's got 99 strength and 90 jumping. You know, he's going to win most headers back post. Um, you might as well just put your controller down, <laughs> don't even attempt. Uh, so people who missed out on them, they're really gonna be upset. I've been seeing a lot of plays using on Um This is the new headliner card. He seems like a really good card to use um, on Altovic. You know, he's a good play all around. You know, he's not too slow. He's got good pace. He's from the Premier League as well. Um, his jumping is not so great as again, if you put a marksman on him, he gets 81 jumping. But it's mainly the height, six foot four. Obviously, Ibra is better, but he's quite decent um, for back post headers. I see a lot of players using him as a cam because he's got, although his balance is not that good, he, he's quite good, I suppose, at shielding the ball, or because he's got good short passing as well. So I see a lot of people using him in cams um, to distribute the ball or taking shots outside the box. So the main probably the question you're probably going to ask is, well, how do you defend it with the players that you have? Well, the truth is, as I said, you can't. You to defend against the cross, even if you manually defend and move your player in front, you see these 360 no scope headers go in. And uh, if you watch my stream, you've seen me experience it, and it's it's the worst kind of thing. What what I try to do is I try to have four backs that are quite tall. Um, so these are these are very cheap options, you know. Um, uh, Mendy only fell out. Mendy only cost one k. He's five foot ten, and he's got seventy eight jumping. If you put an anchor on him. So for those of you that don't know, Anchor gives plus 10 jumping. So if I put an Anchor on him, he's going to get um, 88 jumping. So he's quite good um, being 5 foot 10. Uh, for example, in Babu, another player as well, uh, he's quite toy 6 foot. And he already has um, 78 jumping. Again, when you put an Anchor on him, he gets, or Sentinel, he gets plus 10. So he gets 88 jumping. So you kind of want the tallest players as possible. Of course, you need the balance. Um, but I would say try to put your fullbacks on stay back. Um, I found that if you put, if you, for example, ask your fullbacks to go forward, the problem is, is that when when you're attacking, your fullbacks will basically run out of position um, if they're unbalanced. And when you do get counted, when a back post header, when a back post cross comes in, they're not going to be in a left back or right back position. They're going to be like kind of in the middle of the pitch, away from where you want them to be. So I would say try putting them on stay back while attacking so they're in the best position to defend against back post headers is what I found. Um, so probably th th what kind of players? Well, as I said, tall players. Um, if you're a very rich per person, um, I've seen a lot of players um, in Division 1. And some of my friends who also have a lot of money, um, they're using Varane. Um, they're using the, the team of the year Varane. He's got 90 pace. So they, so you, you can actually play him in right back. So people are starting Varane, for example, in five defender formations. So he gets the chemistry, you know, he already has, you know, 90 jumping. You put an anchor on him, you know, he gets he gets 99 jumping. You know, he's he's uh, six foot three as well. So he's really good. So people are actually playing him, playing him um, in the right back position. It's the same with Ramos. Um, I'm seeing a lot of good players, especially even in the pro scene. 
Um, the best way to defend against it right now is just to use these mega teams. Like even Ramon, he's got 85 pace. You put an anchor on him again, it's the same situation. He's six foot. You know, you put an anchor on him. He's already got 99 jumping. I suppose you can even probably just put a shadow on him, and he's pretty much OP as it is. And you're seeing a lot of that. Um, I would say mid game. Let's say, for example, um, what I have realized is if you're going up against specific players, so let's say you know someone's abusing the crossing meta, just pause the game and let's say, for example, let's say you know, let's say you play drop back, I don't play drop back, let's say you play drop back and you're finding that people are crossing against you, what you can do is just pause the game and maybe move one of your center backs to the right back role, the left back role, to basically where he's abusing, um, or he or she is abusing uh, the back post headers, so that's the best way of doing it mid game so if you, if you know someone just keeps crossing try to move your center back um in terms of cheap in terms of um options for left backs you know you have a lot of players um sandro is also a good player i mean he's like the um that's like a mid tier player sandro um you know even his base card i mean it's it's pretty decent you kind of want someone who's got decent height and you want decent jumping you know sandro hasn't got the best 79 um but for a mid-tier player, he'll get um, 89 with anchor. He's quite good. He's not that tall. He's 5'11", but he gets the job done. Um, what other players I'm seeing is, for example, um, that guy. I think his name is Tag uh, Taglia, Taglia Fico or something. This guy here. I think it's his Road to the Final or whatever card that is. this is. Um, this is a really good card. You know, Although he's 5'7", but he actually has 96 jumping. Um, I think if you're in front of someone like Ronaldo, there's a good chance you might get the ball before Ronaldo. But I wouldn't recommend him. I would say Sandro is probably the best. Um, obviously, the the best card, I think, as a left back, if you can, is Ferland Mendy. I know I, pl I play him in CDM on my main account. But if, if I ever find that, I'm getting I'm getting lots of crosses going against me. Um, not, Norman Men not, not Benjamin Mendy, Ferland Mendy. If I find that I'm getting a lot of crosses against me, I end up putting um, Ferland Mendy, his, um, I think it's his future star card. Yeah, you know, um, one second, let me just delete. Let me just remove this card one second, send to club. We'll do Mendy, concept Mendy. Yeah, so Ferland Mendy, you know, I normally play him on CDM, as you guys know, my main account. But if I'm getting abused... Uh, from the from the back post crosses, I put him in left back. He's got 87 jumping. You put an anchor on him. He's got 97 jumping, and he's five foot ten. He's got the pace. He's got the power, the physical, everything to defend against back post headers. Um, so that's another very good card. Um, now for right backs. Now, I don't think there's that many right backs. Um, as I said, you know. Some right backs are quite short. I mean, you do have, for example, the players like Alves. Um, again, he's SBC, so you can't really get him. Um, he's a bit on the short side. Again, he's five foot seven. I wouldn't recommend him, but you know, if you can make do with him, I would say he gets ninety nine jumping. But he is five foot eight, five foot seven. The same with um with a. Uh, Tagliafico, you know, he gets the job done, but he's not someone I'd recommend. If you have him already, then fair play. Um, another play is also very good is um, Vasalco. Uh, again, this is the this was the Champions League one. Um, the Champions League, his card is really good, you know. Um, I think it's this card anyway. Yeah, he's got he's five foot eleven with ninety one jumping. Again, with anchor, he gets ninety nine jumping. Um, but for example, if you're on a, if you're on a, I would say relatively low budget, um, one play that I've been, been using very briefly, um, is Demarcos. Um, some people, what they do is they put Demarcos on a sub bench because if you sub him on on five chemistry, he's still got eighty-seven pace. He's got decent defending. If you if you do find yourself having trouble, um, he's six foot. You know, this is in form by the way, and he's got eighty jumping. If you can fit him on full chem, again, he's got ninety jumping. Um, but the most players are probably going to go for Cancelo. Cancelo is kind of the, I suppose, the go-to card. You know, um, his eight is 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 uh one to watch got upgraded. You know, he's got every bit anchor gets ninety jumping. You know, he's six foot and he's good all around. Um, the best card, and I, if you have a lot of money, what I would suggest is get someone like Serge Aurier. Serge Aurier is a really good card, and this is road to the final card. A lot of people don't know about this card. Um, I see him a lot in Division One um, when I was in Division One. Um, 
he has 99 jumping and he's five foot nine you know even though he's not the tallest of people but because his base i always found that campy styles let's say someone for example with um with uh um let's say for example 90 jumping so let's say someone has 90 jumping right and you put a chemistry style like ank on them i still find someone with a, a base that 99 is amazing is, is much better and Serge always a good example you know even as a super sub if you bring this guy on and what i see a lot of players do even some pro players i was looking at a foot champions channel um, they have sword Serge Ori on a bench, so if you find yourself getting exploited um, from the back post headers, you bring someone like him on. And that's the the basically the main ways to defend against one. I know this is a long video, if you did stick around for the entire video, I hope you did learn something and hope you can incorporate this. Um, I would say also, if you are struggling, try to use hug the sidelines. Um, defensively, hug the sidelines does help as well, because um, obviously your fullbacks stay out wide. and when they're defending, they, when when you use hug the sidelines, as you guys know, your fullbacks hug the sideline, um, as you guys know, as I mentioned many times. And I find that when you're defending, they come back and they run in a bit in a kind of like a inverted runs back towards goal, and sometimes it helps defend uh, defend against the back post headers. Um, but what I would say is try not to have your defensive width uh, too narrow. Um, I'm seeing. It does seem logical in some respect that you want a narrow defense um, for the back post headers, but it's actually quite the opposite. You know, if someone goes down the wing and they do a cross far post, you would see, for example, sometimes that you think that just because it's narrow, you're going to control the middle. But you'll see, for example, too many times like someone like Ronaldo will be on the outside of the player and he will out jump the player if the ball goes far back post. So I wouldn't recommend that because what happens is the players have to have to kind of run out if that makes sense they have to run out so let's say for example we have a back four like here in a box let's say for example here here and here it's when all those like over here for example you find out that sometimes that the player has to run out to mark Ronaldo so it's not really the most efficient again you don't want too much of course too much of great width because you're going to be exposed in the middle to the strikers who are tall so that's why I would say, you know, try to keep a balance with, try not to have any less than four, I would say, to defend against crosses. So if you do find yourself struggling against crosses, the best thing to do is probably play drop back and to have a high um, defensive width and have your depth about three. Don't have it too low. Drop back already drops it quite back, but you want it on about a three. Um, that way you're not too close to the, to the, to the kind of the, to the goal line, because I find that's when goalkeepers don't catch the ball and goalkeepers mess up you want three and you kind of want as i said a balanced width so you're kind of controlling all areas of the pitch anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video this was a very long video but i thought it was it's quite necessary um to give the information out um if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section down below i think this is for now going to be the meta eventually coming very soon but i think for now this is going to be kind of the the starting points i think maybe in two three weeks time in the foot champs you're going to see a lot more people using a lot more crosses it wasn't that bad this week um and unless you get to the gold elite tiers but i think in the following weeks this is going to be the main meta as you as you probably know it's hard to score inside the box so it's better to score from across anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching